Good afternoon, Lilia. Good afternoon. I recently heard a story of a woman who went into a Walmart and bought $1,000 worth of goods. She went to the checkout, and when she came time for her to pay, what do you think she pulled out? Any guesses? You think it was a credit card, a bunch of $20 bills, a Bible? No, it was none of those things. She pulled out a million dollar check. The cashier was taken aback, obviously. There's no such thing of, as a $20 million bill. What, was, what kind of change would he give out for that? $999,000 in cash? There was only one slight problem. It's illegal. So when the woman was arrested, they found a couple more of those dollar bills in her purse. People were wondering, what was she going to do with that? I personally think that she was going to buy some raptor tickets. No, not just <laughs> It's not too difficult to know whether or not a million dollar bill is genuine. If you have one, you know it's not genuine because they don't exist. When it comes to discipleship and true faith in Christ, it's impossible for any human to fairly judge. When you think of discipleship in the Bible, maybe you think of the time that Jesus told Peter to drop his fishing nets in the water and he caught a massive amount of fish. Christ then tells him, James, and John to come become fishers of men, and at that very moment, they become disciples of Christ. The question is, how do we know that we're true disciples of Christ? True disciples of Christ are obedient. Christ told Peter to fish, a random carpenter telling an experienced fisherman to go fishing, and Peter obeys. Of course, after seeing this miracle, he decides to obey Jesus and drops down everything else he has. But what can we obey? First and foremost, we have to obey the commandments of his word. Jesus tells the disciples in John 15, verse 10, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. That is the foundation of discipleship. We must choose either willful obedience or willful disobedience. You cannot choose both. You have to be either cold or hot, empty or full, salty or sweet. That last one doesn't apply to food. They are obedient and beg for, for forgiveness when they aren't. Disciples are also reverent to God. They are knowledgeable with their own sins. The day Peter became a disciple of Jesus, I have no doubt that Peter had seen the greatest catch he had ever witnessed. You don't see sinfulness in catching a large amount of fish, unless it is such a large amount of fish that it is bordering on miraculous. Peter probably thought, you never catch this many fish in one place, and I am catching this many fish in one place. Carpenters do not mysteriously haul huge amounts of fish from one area, unless he is more than just a carpenter. In seeing this awesome might of God, you realize how very insignificant you are. After witnessing a miracle, Peter starts referring to Jesus as Lord or Master. Peter says, in comparison to this man, I am nothing. True disciples must see themselves as they truly are, sinful. It would be as if you were shooting shots from, to a basketball in gym, and you feel pretty good about yourself. You sink a few three throws, you do some layups, you sink some three pointers, and you're feeling pretty good about yourself. Then this guy walks in and says, hey, my name's Kyle Lowry. You mind if I could do some baskets with you? He then proceeds to do 10 three pointers back to back as shots. He then realized that you're not as powerful as you thought you were. This is what Peter saw. He saw the hand of God working and says, I am a sinful man. Another mark of a true disciple can be found in verse 11. The disciples get all of these fish to shore, and everyone is filled with amazement. The professional fishermen are the ones who are most amazed because they realize how amazing this catch is. Christ comes to Peter and says, Do not fear, for now you will be catching men. In the same verse he says, And when the boat were caught to land, they left and followed him. True disciples of Christ want Christ alone and nothing else. They want to do his bidding. To Peter fish of money, this was how he made his living, paid his bills, and bought food. He traded fish for food and services and had 
to date caught the biggest amount of fish he had ever seen. He had basically won the first century Mediterranean lottery. He could have said, no more worrying about how to pay the bills or having to support my nagging mother. You know, that, that, that has nothing to do with my mother, by the way. Um, I am set for life. And what did he do? What did he, John, and James do? They left everything and followed Christ. They had found a much larger prize. They had found that Jesus was worth more than any amount of money. This is the essence of following Christ. The answer to the question, am I a true disciple of Christ, can be found by answering this question, do I want anything more than Christ? We should not settle for second best or for the passing pleasures of this world. We should seek Christ and Christ alone, leave all else and follow him. This is what true disciples, genuine disciples of Christ do. Why is discipleship so important? If Jesus' death and resurrection were the brains of God's plan of salvation for us, then discipleship is a heartbeat. It is a sacrificial lifestyle of disciples that helps to inspire the world to leave everything behind and follow Christ exclusively. God set his son to set the captives free. It's the disciples who will go forth and light the world with the gospel of Jesus' soon return.